done with some white hair. We used to have a subject called geography, and there we used to talk about our beautiful solar system, the sun, and the night planets. Last week, I actually went to a school in Hyderabad for an interaction with the students, and we're talking about how Chandrayaan has been a very successful launch. And we came to the topic about solar system, and I was telling that there are nine planets. Now there was a girl called Anjali who stood up and said that there are eight planets. You are wrong. So I just asked her, "Are you sure?" She said, "Yes." Then we live in a world which is 24 by 7 on, and a quick search in the Google actually revealed that there are eight planets. Pluto, which actually was a planet. Is now a dwarf planet because it doesn't have, have all the criteria for a planet. The context is the kind of damage which we are doing to the environment today. It may so happen that we will end up with seven planets. Having said that, the Earth has a lot of resilience, but the problem is it takes billions of years to repair it. While the Earth will still survive, humanity will not. Welcome to the world of climate change. Now let me talk about my dad, who was a brilliant uh, chemist, and he worked with a company called ICI Industries Limited for 36 years. So I grew up in a very small town. I will say it's a small, semi town. Lot of greenery around. We did not have any public vehicle. There was only one school. Uh, we had our own water from the streams. There were no movie theaters, and life was good. Then, after his retirement, he chose to move to a city for a better life, for better access to food, for better facilities. And what happened is, he succumbed to a disease called dementia. Now, dementia is a disease where the brain degenerates, and it slowly shuts down. You stop eating, you stop drinking water, you stop recognizing people. Now there are multiple cases of dementia. Why it is caused? But when I look at my dad, he did not smoke, he did not drink, he had a healthy lifestyle, he never had a blood pressure problem, he was socially active, he was physically active. Now, if you look at it, in 2019 there was a research which came out, which said that dementia is directly related to air pollution. A study last year revealed that if the temperature goes one degree above seventeen degrees centigrade, there are more cases of dementia happen. Four years ago, when my dad was diagnosed with dementia, there were forty lakh people in India who had this disease. Today, as I speak, eighty-eight lakh people are affected with dementia. So there is actually a relation between climate change and mental health, which is actually a Dementia is actually nothing but a degenerative brain disease, which has something to do with mental health. I have two friends in Bangalore, Pranav and Smriti, a lovely couple, a power couple. Pranav actually heads an investment banking firm, and Smriti is actually part of a media house. Fifteen years ago, they got married. They had a child, but over the years, they figured out that this child had a problem with certain sensory. Issues. They took her to a doctor, and they looked at it that she had autistic disorder. See, autistic spectrum disorder. It's a gamut of symptoms. Well, what happens is the child actually has a problem with certain sensory. The way they communicate, there's a slight problem. But having said that, autism people are brilliant people. Albert Einstein, Charles Darwin, Bill Gates, Larry Messi. Our old Srinivas and Ramanujan all have autism. There is no problem with that. The problem is the air pollution and the increased temperature has a problem with these kids because if you subject them to to pollution or climate increased temperature, they become hypersensitive, and that is where they are seeing a lot of problems. Today we have kids with autism that is very normal. We are in a world where we are talking about diversity. Equity inclusion. There's nothing wrong about it, but the way climate change is happening, it is a problem for these kids. They are becoming hypersensitive. It's difficult for them to survive. 
Now let's come to that having established a relationship that climate change has an impact on mental health. Let's try to understand what exactly is climate change. Now the classical geographical definition, climate is a set of environmental conditions over 30 to 35 years. For example, the winter is like this, the rainy season is like this. But the way things are moving, the 30, 35 years doesn't hold true. We are actually changing very fast. The climate will change because nothing can be static. The problem is the climate change is becoming adverse. In fact, uh, there was a report which came out that between 2030-2050, the Earth's temperature will increase by 1.5 degrees centigrade, which is actually a problem because some of the things can be irreversible. The second is there is something called a mean surface temperature which we talk about and in the 1996 it was around 1.48 degrees centigrade. But the way the earth is getting heated up by the end of this century it is likely to go up to 4.85 degrees. So this is the kind of damage which we are doing and we are seeing already the effects. We are seeing floods, we are seeing hotter summers. We are seeing colder winters, we are seeing droughts. Now, what it has to do with mental health? Is it really related? Now, we all understand the physical implications. Like, whenever there is a change in climate, we have drought, we have floods, we have a heated condition results in diseases, our health system breaks down, there is a problem around livelihood, people have to migrate to different cities, and we all know during COVID, when the labor force had to migrate, it put a lot of pressure on mental pressure on these guys. First of all, they are unemployed. That's why there's an anxiety, there's a depression, there are suicides. I have a friend called Srikant Shinde, whom I met during one of my visits to Maharashtra. He's a farmer. And fortunately, he did not commit suicide, but he went into a state of depression because the environmental conditions had changed. The fertile land, there was drought. Farmer suicide is a unfortunately a tough phenomenon for a country like us. In fact, the latest data we say that every two hours a farmer commits suicide. So having said that, there is depression, there is anxiety, there is suicide, and there is also a lot of anxiety about the future. Now a classic marketer will tell you that there is a sector called DICS, Double Income No Kids. This is a segment which is a loving thing for the marketers because they are, it's a very good uh, segment for them. So earlier people did not have kids because they chose not to, because they wanted, did not want to take the responsibility. Today's couples don't want to have kids because they feel that if they bring the kid, how will they survive? Because they will be subject to pollution, they will be subject to heated conditions, there could be some other diseases. So that is the way where we are going. So this is the real context around how climate change is leading to mental health. So we spoke about suicidal tendencies. Unfortunately, India has the highest number of suicides in the world. It is unfortunately known as the suicide capital. But the thing is, let's accept the fact Climate change is real, mental health is real. In fact, a very interesting study said that one out of five people in the world, they actually suffer from some kind of a mental disorder. In fact, in kids, the number is as high as 23%. So while we may choose to ignore all this, this is a real problem for us. Now, what is the impact around that? We understand there's climate change, we understand it has an impact on mental health. What is the impact? Now, it's very easy to say that there's a physical loss. Whenever there's a landslide, there are houses uh, which are actually being washed away, there is a loss of livelihood, all these can be quantified. But unless you quantify it, people really don't take it seriously. A recent study said that between 2012 to 2013, this loss, the economic loss due to mental condition in India is $1 trillion. $1 trillion and we want to be a $5 trillion economy by 2025. So if we have to really go to that level, this is an area which has to be addressed immediately. 
Now, what can we do about it? Now, a lot of people will suggest you that as a climate change is something we need to address. Yes, there are basics which we have forgotten. Once we leave the room, if we switch off the fans and the lights, we can save electricity. Same thing if we use more of public transport. These are all basics. Maybe I am not going to talk about it. We all know what needs to be done for climate change. But the important part is acknowledge it. If we are still in a state of denial, nothing is going to solve the problem. Second thing is mental health. Let's acknowledge it. Because a lot of people tend to dismiss it because when we look at the earlier generation, because the way it was, people had less of depression, people had less of anxiety, people were not really anxious about the future in that what, we, what is going to happen. But we have moved to a fast-paced economy which, which is common. So this is important that we acknowledge it. And once we acknowledge it, it's important that we help each other as a community because we are our social beings. I, have a, I had a friend called Avinash Sahu. He was actually part of the super cyclone which happened in Odisha. He lost his son and daughter. I used to speak to him on a regular basis, but we lost, we lost touch. And one fine day, I came to know that he is no more. It still hurts me that I could not save him. Because he was going through a depression and any kind of natural calamity has a depressive effect. Studies have shown that the Gujarat earthquake, the Odisha super cyclone, the Tamil Nadu floods, the Uttarakhand floods. There was a survey which was done about the mental health of these people and it was catastrophic. While a physical ailment we can still recover very fast, but it takes a lifetime to recover from a mental health. We are in a situation, we are in a war, World War III, which will be fought around climate change, around mental health. But the only thing is, this is a war where humanity has to be together. This is not one country is fighting against another. And if we really don't do anything about it, humanity will actually cease to exist. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. It was a privilege and honor to be here. Thank you.